Oh, welcome back to Jane Table Life Hex Stuff. This is a Radiola AR812, and this is the first commercially available super heterodyne um, on the consumer market, at least. Um, first super heterodyne sold by RCA, and this is from 1924. Um, so, this particular one is not in the best condition. Um, see, the, some of the dial indicators are kind of getting black and these controls you're supposed to be able to read, but they're all, all gone black, and same with this nameplate here. Um, the cabinet's not in the best of shape, although it does seem to be pretty much all there. Um, it is missing a handle, it's supposed to be a handle on top here, but it's missing that. But um, other than that, all the knobs are there. Um, these are doors here, these pull out for your battery storage. You can see on the inside of the door there, they tell you how to hook up the batteries. And they have the same thing on the other side for uh, the other cabinet. Um, so those two things are there, the knobs are there. Um, all the molding seems to be there. Um, you can see it's kind of beat up here. And you'll see why in a minute, why that's beat up here and here. Um, these knobs don't work. You're supposed to turn the tuning indicators and they don't do anything. Same with that one. Uh, one of these is filament and one of them is volume. One of these is power and the other one is kind of like a loudness control. Um, where you can like, pull, basically it turns on and off one of the audio stages. You should pull out. There we go. It's kind of crunchy. Uh, and this is your speaker jack there. Um, take a look at the size. Like, there's really not much to see there, just more beat up finish. You can see there's a little piece of veneer missing here. Uh, nothing too terrible. That's how it looks okay. So this thing opens up. There's a little catch here and then this swings out. You can see there's our... Uh, one of these is going to be antenna tuning, one of is going to be the oscillator tuning since it's a super heterodyne. Uh, you can see our uh, giant potentiometer is there. Uh, of course, there's no tubes. Um, this takes the UV199 tubes. But luckily, if we take a look in this cabinet. It's only kind of crunchy. So you gotta have the battery instructions there. This cabinet, I happen to have some of these guys, which I made. I made a video about that. I should publish that before I publish this one. They're not the prettiest, but uh, hopefully they should have worked. Basically, what this is is I took the, I got some dead UV 199s, took the bases off of them, and then put in these are 3Q5 GT tubes. Um, basically, just a single triode. Actually, I think these are pentodes, but you can wire them as a triode and then wire them into the UV199 base. And supposedly, they're supposed to function like UV199s. Obviously, I haven't tested these yet because the radio needs to be fixed first. But I uh, made a bunch of these, so hopefully these should be, should at least solve the lack of tubes problem. And so this is the... UV199 that base came off of one of the one, one of the UV199s. Just usually the bases will be loose. This cement like fails over time. Um, it doesn't stick to the base anymore. And usually you can, you know, unsolder the wires and pull it off or just rip it off because there's really no sense in saving these wires. The tube is dead. But anyway, uh, I made a video about that. I have to publish that before this one. There's also a screw in here. Not sure what from. Um, so, what we can do is put everything out of here. Had to be so they don't get knocked around. I've actually had this radio for I think about two years now. Just never got around to working on it. It's an extra, extra 3Q5s in there just in case we need them. Some more of the tubes. Another UV199 
199. Third one. And there's the wires for hooking up the batteries. Set that away for now. Put this back in for now. So it's kind of messed up. I wonder if that, this door might be falling apart. I have to take a closer look at that. But anyway. So the first thing I want to do with this is continuity checks. Um, I'm not sure why you can able to see, but see how this these this is a whole big tin there with all the tubes on top of it. So that's what they call a catacomb, and this whole canister here is actually potted in wax, and then all of the um, you know coils and everything or on the bottom of this plate here, sealed in wax. And what happens over time is the wax like cracks or shifts or whatever and starts breaking the internal connections in between the coils. Um, so usually when you get these things, um, you know, you're going to have some coils that show open, but hopefully it's just that the wire is in between the coils or in between the coil and the tube socket has broken and the coil itself is intact. Um, and then you can just take this out, melt out the wax, um, and then solder the wires back together as needed. But so the first thing I'm gonna do here is some continuity checks. Um, actually, you can see this looks like there's a little service note that I see. It says 2 15, 26 or something. Looks like there's a, a type button note there, kind of hard to read. Oh, that's interesting. And here's the serial number plate there. The model number and all of the patents. So anyway, let's get to continuity checking here. Um, it's supposed to be, now you can see it, there's a um, loop antenna in the back of the cabinet all the way in the back. You can only see it now, but this thing actually comes out. Um, I can show that in a minute. And that's That's why the cabinet is so chewed up here on the other side because you can see there's a little pin here. So this thing will actually lift out. See how it lifts up there. And this pin will lift out of that slot and this whole thing will pull out. But it looks like what's happened is either someone didn't get this pin back in the slot or this pin came out of the slot and started beating up the cabinet here or something. But it looks like this happened on both sides. So uh, it's not a huge deal. This Actually this other side is kind of worse than that side. But Anyway, first step is continuity checks. So, what we need to do that is a schematic. And we have one here. I got out my old tablet because I was using the bendy pad to play music on the tube amplifier I'm building. And I got tired of not being able to play music and charge it at the same time. So I got this thing back out. Um, here's our schematic down here. So you can see how this dotted line here is the catacomb and they have all the terminals numbered and where each one goes. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the meter and the radio in the same view for continuity checking. Um, let me see if I can do something about that. Right, hopefully that's visible. Um, I have identified a couple of opens here. So you can see then, let's see where are we? Moon goes to pin 11, which goes to wire 10 on the catacomb, and then goes up to the plate of V4. So if I go on the moon wire, and then I go to the plate of V4, you can see there's no continuity there. Um, just to prove that this is working, um, we can go to red here, goes to pin uh, 12 to wire 11 up to the transformer to the plate of V3. So if I go over to the red wire and then go to the plate of V3, you can see there is continuity there. So definitely something is open in this circuit. Um, there was one other one that I identified. Might have been this one, pin 6 to V3 grid. Oh, 
that one looks good. There was at least one other one that I identified as being open. I have to remember which one it was, but definitely we're gonna have to take this apart anyway to fix at least this one. And the other one which I identified, some of these you can't even test like this one here. You can see this goes up through the coil then to a capacitor, so you wouldn't be able to test continuity of that coil anyway because all that stuff's inside the catacomb. So you can't get to this side of the coil to test continuity there. Um, we tested this coil. Um, this one, there's an open in this circuit. This one checked out good, and this transformer checked out good. Um, see this one here going up through this transformer, then through this one, then to the plate of V1. That one checked good. Um, this coil here we just tested, that checked good. Um, no, maybe this one wasn't the one. This one, it's the pin six. Yeah, we did just check that one. Um, what was another one that checked bad? Check out which one it was. Might have been this one, L4 to, so that is pin five to V2 grid, and that one checks. That one checks okay. I thought there was another one that checked open, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. We have to take the whole thing apart to fix this thing. So, um, we come over here. So, looks probably like all these wires are going to have to be desoldered. Um, got two screws here. We got two little rivets here, and you can actually see. Must have been the kind of like their anti tampering device because it's kind of like the early version of the warranty board if we move stickers because you can see the rivets have the little RCA logo stamped in them. So um, I guess that if you took it into your shop and these were missing or disfigured, then RCA would know you tried to get inside the catacomb. But uh, I'll see if I can pry these off carefully so they don't get too damaged and then maybe I'll just glue them back on afterwards for appearances sake because it is pretty cool actually that they took the time to put their logo in the rivets. Um, of course it was for a nefarious purpose, but anti-tapering, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so if all these wires on the back of the catacomb have to get desoldered, and then it looks like probably just at least this screw and this screw to take the whole catacomb out. Um, I think that this catacomb was replaced at one time because you can see how the soldering work here on the catacomb wires is different than the soldering work here on the terminal strip out to the everywhere else wires. So it definitely looks like somebody's replaced this catacomb and you know didn't quite solder up to OCA factory levels. But anyway, um, and while we're here, the reason that this, uh, well, one of the reasons why this knob doesn't do anything is because the linkage here has come disconnected. You can see how there's a, like a little fork here and they got some kind of like little ball U-joint thing. So that just and it's going to have to put that back together. But the real issue is these rubbers here. Let's come out of here. No, not really. Um, this rubber here is rock hard. So you know, that's not going to grip this drum when it's rock hard like that. So we'll have to figure something out for that. Uh, same thing with the other side too, you can see this one it's just rock hard, not going to do anything. So, But first, the first issue is this continuity. So I'll desolder all these wires, uh, pull this out, and see if it'll fit on my toaster oven. So I'm making my radio catacomb castle. See I've made quite a mess of my toaster oven. Got it all over the door, got it all over the bottom, um, got some of it in the tray. I also got some of it on the front plate there and some of it in the tube socket, so I'll have to see about cleaning that out. Got some of it on the counter. Um, got it depotted. So this is the box here. And you can see this wax is like a real hard stuff. It just chips. So it's like a real hard wax. And what happens is like over time, um, because it's so hard when it cracks, like it, it cracks like as a, because like, like, usually like if it's a soft wax, like it won't, you know, shear like that. Like if this was a soft wax, this would just like, you know, bend a little bit instead of just cracking. But because it's a hard wax, 
when it cracks, or I guess when it's like stressed or whatever, it cracks, and then those cracks like break the, the tiny wires um, that you know go to the transformers. I'll show you when I when I take it out of the oven. It, it's just you know the um, you know like a frame of transformers with real fine wires going up to each pin on the socket or out each wire at the back of the catacomb. Um, so I'll probably just clean some of this out. This doesn't have to be like perfectly clean. I'll probably just put the catac the like thing back on top of here, just you know I guess for appearances and also so that you know nothing could like hit the transformers and break the wires that way. Kind of like an extra protection. Um, I'll have to clean this up because you can see I got some paper towel glued to it now. So this will need some cleaning up. Uh, just going to like get this wax off of here. Um, Should have just went with tin foil from the first place, but whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure this will clean up just fine. You know, worst case, I'll put it back in the the oven for you know half an hour or whatever, and just wipe this off. But anyway. Um, so yeah, I think I've emptied the tray about two or three times now. Um, everything is full with wax, just empty it out. It's quite a bit of wax in there, like this whole tub was basically you know, completely full of wax, so uh, quite a bit had to come out. I just got in there oh, right around 250 or so, um, a little bit higher, it's melting the wax. Um, so I managed to mess up my oven mitts pretty good, so so no longer food oven mitts, but anyway, um, hopefully when we take this out of here, we'll be able to see where the wires are broken, and hopefully it's not the transformers themselves that have gone open. But yeah, just have to see. Um, so I'll leave this in here for I don't know how long it takes to get the rest of the wax off. Um, last time I took it out, it was getting pretty down low, but there was still like a, a slight film. Um, over some of the transformers and the wires going through them, so so I can melt that off. You can see the the some of it coming to the front of the tray. The tray is not quite level um, because the toaster oven isn't quite big enough for this. So um, it's actually almost kind of resting like on the bottom heating element. So not the best use case, but um, hopefully it'll work. All right, so you can see we've got this all out here. Um, so. The other open, let me just pull up my schematic here. So the first open um, was this from pin or from wire 10 to the plate of V4. Uh, that coil was open. And the other open was this one here, which went from pin 3 to this wire, which I think was pin six or something like that. Um, if I can remember which one it was here. It was pin 11, or wire 11. So wire three to wire 11, this coil right here across the capacitor was measuring open. And if you take a look down here, let me see if I have something to point with here. So you can see this is everything unpotted. Uh, these are the two audio transformers, then this I believe is an IF. Um, actually all this stuff would be like either IF or up oh, let's see, we've got two audio transformers. You've got looks like two IF. Um, that weird back coupling. Um, I'll, I'll try to explain this circuit. It's a, kind of like a, almost like a reflex type circuit. Basically they use like either the first stage or the first two two stages twice, um, once for RF and then again for IF. Um, anyway, so we've got that weird feedback coil, and then we've got these coils here, are kind of like input like RF input coils. Um, and so you can see this pin right here is where wire three comes down, and you can see right there that end is broken off. Hope you can see that right there that end is broken off and I believe this is the other end right here that it's supposed to be connected to so I'm going to see if I can solder something to bridge that break so that should take care of the uh, the first open um, the second open however if I can 
put this over here without breaking anything. Um, this is that audio transformer, and this is the winding here. Uh, it comes in this wire, comes in this wire, and then it comes out this wire over here. And I can't see any breaks in these wires. Like this is solid going right in the, the transformer. And then this one comes out, and it goes through the sleeve over to the plate of that tube. So, um, and like I said, none of these seem to be broken. So probably the open is inside this transformer. Um, but luckily this is just an audio transformer so we can use that um, OC bypass and just eliminate this transformer entirely. So uh, hopefully that should work together to repair this issue or we'll just eliminate that transformer and just OC couple the audio stages. Um, and then hopefully we can just reconnect. Um, that, that wire down there and hopefully that'll fix our other open. So I'm going to get on that. Um, I have done some cleaning on this. If you can really see what I cleaned up all of the, um, the contacts in here for the bottom of the tubes. And I also cleaned up this plate. Uh, if you remember, I'd gotten uh, wax all over this. So uh, I think they're cleaned up pretty well. You know, there's maybe it's a little bit here and there, but I think that'll be fine. You know, it is supposed to look old. It is almost hundred years old. So you know, a little bit left on top, I think will be fine. I uh, just didn't want that, you know, the whole thing was put like shiny with wax. So I kind of wanted to eliminate that. But um, actually the, to clean this off, all I did was use lacquer thinner. Um, and there's a thin layer of, wa of this wax. Uh, the lacquer thinner seems to work pretty well. Um, kind of the weird thing is it almost seems they use two different types of wax in here. Um, so you can see this wax in the bottom of the can, kind of like a light brown color. Um, but if you look at some of the wax over here, you know, some of it's that color, but like look at this stage, see how dark some of that wax is? Uh, and actually if I bring it. So this is the last load of wax um, on the last trip in the oven. You can see how much darker this is, especially some of this stuff over here is almost like black. Um, it was it, it, most of the other wax that came out was like that, that light brown stuff seems so we saw in the can, but whatever this last layer was, this last little bit here is super dark. You can even see how it's already cracked, you know, just from cooling in this pan. So this stuff is you know, pretty hard and brittle. And that's what causes the wires to break you know, over the years, either through heat cycling or vibration or whatever, there are cracks form in that giant block of wax. And the, along these cracks is what breaks the wires. Um, as you can as far as only one wire broke, I think these things usually have. Uh, this is a pretty common issue for these type of catacombs. I think usually these have you know, multiple wires broken in them. But um, so yeah, we'll see if we can uh, resolder that, and then I'll install the RC bypass for that audio transformer, and then I think we're just about ready to reinstall this. Yeah. and then get some batteries hooked up and see what it does. Alright, well I got my resistor in there. Um, kind of hacky, but they don't give you a lot of places to solder on in here, so I just cut that one wire off the transformer there and solder it to the other end of the resistor. Um, and then I have a capacitor going from that point over to the grid of the next tube. Um, so, uh, let me see if I can pull up the website I used for this. Uh, I used a 22k ohm resistor and a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Yeah, here we go. So this is... But I, you know, just to get a general idea, um, I have to put a link to this down in the description. So, if the plate to B plus side is open, try using a 22K at one watt. Um, I think that's a half watt I used. These tubes do not draw a lot of power, so, um, hopefully it should be fine. Let me see if I can find which 
can just do a use. Oh, it is one more. Um, but it probably shouldn't need to be in this application. Like I said, these these old tubes um, really don't draw a lot of current. So, and this may be too high even. Um, and maybe we'll have to go down a little bit. I think the um, primary resistance of these is only like either 1K or 5K, I don't remember exactly. But of course, then you've got the impedance too, which is a factor. So we'll see how this works. Um, you can kind of see a little schematic there, how I did it. So same thing, you just go from the B plus to the plate, and then from a plate, from the plate to a capacitor, he did use 0.1 um, to the grid there. So yeah, that's just what we did there. Um, hopefully it should work fine. As far as the other one that was open, you can see by looking closely at these, just how fine these wires are. Like, see, there's one right there, uh, there's one right there. They're really, really fine wires that they used here. Um, so, and you can see right there is the repair on that one. Um, kind of hard to do because, you know, these wires are so fine, they just flop all over the place. Um, but I managed to, to get it, and see here, we'll flip this up, and we'll go back to, see that meter there. So now this should be from pin 11, let me see, the numbers for the wires are on the bottom, so... So you should be pin 11 to pin 6, I believe it's this one. So. I've got the, I think it was pin 6. One. Is it this one? Well, it was connected anyway. Make sure I'm checking the right thing here. Uh, that coil actually be pin three to pin eleven. And wire three not actually wire three because they skipped the two. There you go, 33 ohms. That's reconnected. Yeah, that was the right one. So 33 ohms there, so that's reconnected. Uh, hopefully it should be fine. Um, there was something with pin six though, pin? Yeah, that was something else. I was thinking of pin six for some reason, but pin six goes through a different coil. Um, anyway, so hopefully we should be good now on all the continuity checks. Um, so I'm going to reassemble this. I'm going to put the top plate back on, put it back in the can, um, just to protect those real fine wires. Um, you know, in case you know a piece of veneer or something falls off and is rattling as hard as they can, they don't want it to break those just because they are so fine. Um, I was able to save these little RCA tamper-proof rivets. Um, those are they're just a piece of lead. And what they did was they put it through these, these things here, which go on the bottom. So this plate goes on top and then the can has a similar setup like this. And then this bar goes on the bottom and kind of like clamps them together. And then um, a bolt goes through the middle and that bolt also goes through the um, mounts in the cabinet. And a screw went through one side and then the rivet went through the other side, and they just kind of mashed it over on the bottom, um, which is what you do with the rivet. Um, but because they're so soft, what I found I could do was, if I took the screw out of the one side, I could actually just lift this up and kind of like, you know, pry it up, and it just ripped the bottom piece of lead off, right like that. So you can see that was what was folded over on the bottom, and by prying it off like that, I just basically popped this off, and left the straight 
shaft for the rivet there. So these should go right back in, I think. Well, putting them in the right side. And pretty close. Went enough to file them down a little bit to make them go in. But um, so I'll probably just set those in, maybe fold it over a little bit on the bottom, just so they don't fall out. Uh, but yeah, so pretty cool. I was able to save both of those. So you know, just for appearance's sake, and what else are you going to get a OCA stamped block of lead? Well, anyway, let me put this back together, um, remount it in the cabinet, and then get back to soldering all these wires back on. Um, in order to do that, you have to have a real soldering iron, like this one, uh, because those stakes in there are, are pretty heavy seal and they've all got you know pretty heavy wires coming off of them. So um, this thing makes short work of that. Um, it takes a while to heat up, but it's a, definitely a, a good thing to have. This is, there we go. 150 watts um, soldering iron with the nice old style cloth cord. Um, so we'll use that to solder those wires back in. And then I think we should be good to hook up some batteries and see what it does. All right, so you can see we've got the two top plated there. We've got one uh, 45 volt battery there, one 45 volt battery there, high impedance speaker there with the Bodge connection. Um, this is basically this is like a series of adapters. Um, so you've got quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter to um, just two wires because that's what this speaker uses. Um, these tubes should not be high enough current to require an output transformer. So um, this is just basically this speaker is the plate load of the output tube. Um, you can see I just wrapped some rubber bands around where that old um, dried hard rubber used to be. You can see it seems to be working. Um, we'll see how long that lasts for. So now is the time to see if I made all these tubes wrong. I verified that the power switch does work. I verified that I've got um, 3.5 volts, well, with no load, 3.5 volts on each tube filament. Um, that will drop with load. And I've got these, I think I have them turned, which way do I have them turned? Should be turned all the way down, I believe. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, like I said, I've verified the power switch works. I've verified that I got 3.5 volts on each of the tube filament connections, like without the tubes in. Uh, I verified that I've got plate voltage for all the tubes. So, actually, I am forgetting something. I forgot to hook up my C battery. Let me do that real quick. All right, so I got the C battery hooked up. I uh, just took 4.5 volts off this multi-section thing here. So, now is the time. And looks like nothing. Don't see any two filaments glowing. And turn off the lights. So turning up the potentiometer. Still have absolutely nothing. And absolutely nothing. So why do we have absolutely nothing? Let's say both all these tubes wrong, which is a possibility. Um, see if I can get one of these tubes out to verify that I did in fact weld them correctly. We're gonna have to redo this catacomb a little bit. Um, the plate on top is not correctly aligned with the. Um, tube sockets, so they're really hard to get in and out. So let me just check the resistance here. You can see that. So filament should be from this pin. Let me hold this here. That's not a good sign. I 
Drop down this way. Yes. Yes. So all of these tubes, I think, and maybe that's right. Yeah, that should be right actually. Yeah, that should be filament. And if I turn this on, which it is still on, and I check the voltage on those two pins, so I can see the meter, that's AC, that's not gonna work. Voltage here. is negative two millivolts. Okay. Um, let me see if I can do multiple things at once here. I wanna uh, put these on here so I get a reading and then see if I change this. Okay, so with the pot all the way up, we're only getting 1.8 volts. So either my batteries are crap or my connection from the batteries is crap. So let me go over here and check. What do we have coming off the battery terminals? I can't see that because of the reflection. Let me try again. Making sure not to touch the 45 volts right underneath me. Three volts. So probably just a bad connection in the battery circuits. Or just could be a bad connection in the power switch. Let me try and here. So I'm trying to go right on the wires in the cells, and that's not working because these things are all corroded. Uh, three volts there. So I wonder if just the power switch is dirty and not passing sufficient current. Let's see, do I have, oh, it could be these pots are dirty too. Let's see, do I have a drop across this pot at all? A couple of millivolts. I don't think that's going to be doing it. Um, We'll check one more thing. Make any difference if I turn this up. We're not the 2.5 volts, so we should be 3 volts. 0.6. Now, so if this would be enough for these things to glow. Turn off the lights one more time and check. I see the faintest, faintest glow, I think, in there. I don't think it's going to be enough. So, let me wiggle this switch a few times. And see what we've got here, if that changed anything. 2.6, no. Okay, so let me try splitting some contact cleaner in there. Switch if I can find my contact cleaner. Now, I cleaned the power switch, cleaned these pen channels, it got up to 2.8. Um, so probably my batteries might be like a little bit weak. Um, technically they want you to run this off of uh, four and a half volts. Um, I didn't have another holder for four and a half volts and when you do that then you have to make sure that you don't go over three volts and cook your tubes so uh, I thought I would try it with three volts first um, given these issues it probably would be better to run off 4.5 and then adjust it down to three because like I've got both these controls maxed out now um, hopefully that 2.8 will be enough to get something out of this so uh, I got the speaker plugged back in um, so I cleaned that power control uh, we'll see what happens this time. Oh, we got some sound now. You can hear the tubes warming up that tinging.
Holy shit, it actually works. Well, that was easy. I mean, aside from departing the catacomb. cuts out. So either that's filament voltage and you turn the filament voltage down too far and the oscillator stops running, or it's uh, volume and it's just dirty and it cuts the volume and you turn it down too low. So that'll have to require some further investigation. selectivity. Um, like most of these old radios, like uh, this old that I work on, uh, even from the late 20s, you know, they're super wide band. Like I think the last one I did was that Sandro 929 or something. You know, you can turn the, the dial so far and you just get one station running over everything. And this thing is super selective and that's the advantage of the super heterodyne. That's super selectivity um, over the TRF. Thank you. 
I guess quite a few stations. Um, you know, if you ever worked on these old 20s radios, um, you know, this is definitely, definitely, uh, you, know, you can tell this is a much better performer, even from 1924, than the TRF sets they were making in the late 20s. Um, so yeah, definitely a pretty cool radio. Um, well, that it works. You might have to look into that. It seems like at the high end of the band, the, it might be doing something weird. Like that there. Almost like it might be like, you know, like a beat frequency or something weird. By the way, this has no long wire antenna. This is just with the built-in antenna in the box. Um, so yeah, this is uh, definitely a nice performing video for its day. Um, my music station only works during the daytime. At night, they cut the power rate down, so I wouldn't expect this thing to pick it up um, because most radios uh, here don't pick it up. Um, the other thing that, you know, it's kind of hard for for me to tune this because it just has the like the Lin Log scale um, and I'm not used to that scale so I'm not sure what my stations are. I believe that this is the high end of the band and this is the low end. Um, I just noticed this pointer is on backwards. Look, it's pointing down below 100 even though we're all right here so I'll have to flip that around. Um, so yeah. That's cool. I wonder if that's like the beat between the oscillator and what the, in the antenna is tuned to. So, uh, volume is still an issue. I have to figure out which one of these is supposed to be volume and why it's not adjusting the volume. Um, I'm assuming that this is running wide open. Um, it's not deafeningly loud, but um, you know these tubes don't have a huge amount of gain either. I, I don't think anyway. I'm actually not sure how well these tubes compare to the original ones, uh, the UV 199s, which by the way, I did find that I still have one that I didn't cannibalize yet. So this is what the original tubes would have looked like. Um, technically, the original versions of these that would have been sold probably with this radio had a uh, brass base. Um, I think they were still using brass bases in 24. These are the later Bakelite pieces. I do have one of those somewhere. It's the brass base with the uh, the nipple on top where they seal it. Uh, these ones have the nipples in the bottom. Um, don't know what it is right now though, but otherwise I would show it. Um, that one's dead, of course. This one's also dead. You can see the grid structure in there. Just a super basic try where you can see that shell is the plate, and then you can kind of see if I can get this to show it. I kind of see some good wires there, and then the cathode is just a wire that runs right up the middle. You know, a view from the top, you can 
And so they just have a wire dangling down the middle of the grid, and that's your cathode. Here in cathode is the same directly here too. Um, so the ones that I put in there, um, I forget what they are now, I mentioned earlier. I believe those are pento tubes, and then you wire them as a triode format. Um, I made a video on that uh, um, before. I just followed someone else's directions on what tubes they used. Um, it's uh, easier to do it that way than trying to figure it out myself. So I followed uh, their directions. I'll have to put a link to that video or that, that website. Right? It's a website that I took it from um, in the description here. Um, it's not my idea. I just used somebody else's idea for that. Um, seems to work. This, this should cut the audio gain. I'm not sure if it's going to come in, but it's just barely coming through now. So that cuts out one stage of the amplifier. Actually, I can see now. Battery setting, volume control. So this is the battery turning the battery down. Wonder if that took away the oscillation. That's not my music station, that's uh, Mexican music. Interesting how it only works on that station if you turn the battery setting down. It's interesting. I wonder if that's a quirk with the newer style tubes. I don't want to oscillate as designed. Um, because I'm sure they have more gain than the original ones, um, so could be. Not sure. And that's the same session, and it picked up twice. I believe, I believe the IF on this thing is like 40 kilohertz or something. It's super low, um, and they use the second harmonic of the oscillator for the mixing. That's why you know all the nameplates say second harmonic because that's what they're using. Um, Super nice, that nice sharp peak here with the super head of an eye. Not, not used to that in radios this old.
Tomorrow when it's light out and they turn the power back up on the music station, I'll have to see if this thing will pick it up. So yeah, uh, so far, pretty satisfied with this. Um, still have to figure out what to do, you know, for his cosmetics. Um, sometimes these plates come up on eBay in better condition. I'm not sure if it would be worth it to go for that or not. Um, the knobs seem to be not too bad. Because they got some dirt on them, but it could be paint that. I don't think they're supposed to have a logo in the middle. I don't see any moment in someone. You can double check on that. Yeah, this thing definitely, I don't know if that'll clean up or not. I'm not sure like if these were, you know, painted or kinda of feels like there was some relief on there. But not really sure. Yeah, I think there's it's a very faint relief, I think. You can just barely kinda of see it. I'm not sure if it'll come through. Yeah, you can kind of see it in the camera. Super heterodyne, and then underneath is the second harmonic with the OCA logo on the top. And then it says radio over there. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, no antenna, no external antenna, just the loop that's built in there. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Alright, so I'm going to call this part one. The radio is working. Um, the next thing to do probably is to first thing I'm going to flip this around just so it looks a little bit nicer. Um, going to realign this top shield here. And realign this top shield too on the catacombs so the tubes are much easier to take in and out. Um, this one you can see I've already broken the glue there, so I'll have to see if I can fix that. Uh, this one I also broke. This is the, I think this is the first one that I made. Um, this is the one I used the silicone instead of the hot glue. And as soon as I twisted this one, it came right off. So for now, I just super glued it back together. Um, and I kind of like gingerly just pushed it down and then kind of use something small to get in there and, and you know, push the pin over and the stop to lock it in so that I wasn't twisting against the glue, it was breaking it again. So, yeah, some of these will have to be redone. Um, so, yeah, if you're following my previous video on how to make these, uh, don't use the um, silicone. I'm not even sure if hot glue is good because this one broke free. This one's super glued on now. We can see how that holds up, but... Uh, definitely got to do something different for the glue on those going forwards. Um, got to figure out the volume control. Um, and I think after that, it should mostly just be cosmetics, really. Um, might have to rig something else that I get a more powerful battery. Um, you know, it does seem to work okay with, with that battery that it has now, which is like slightly less than 3 volts. Um, you know, it might work somewhat better, um, but as we were showing here, like at the high end of the band, that actually works a little bit better if you turn the battery setting down. So, you know, that could be, could be something to do with these tubes having more gain than the original, like it's not oscillating properly at the high end of the band unless you reduce the gain somewhat. Not really sure about that, but either way, it does work. Um, you know, these radios are always at least somewhat finicky because of the, you know, the adjustment, the filament adjustment and then the two tuning dials. So, you know, it's not going to be as easy to use as a modern radio because they're just not built that way. But um, as long as you can fiddle with it and make it work, you know, that's fine with me. Um, and as you can see, we can do that. So that's going to be about it for now. Um, definitely still more work to do on this. Um, cosmetics has to happen. Uh, some of the veneers missing. Actually, there's some missing like from underneath here. Um, like right here, there's some chunks missing. I think some of them are in the cabinet yet. I found a couple of them when I was going through here. Um, one of the doors we have to fix, some of the video is coming off. Obviously the whole thing has to be refinished. Um, it'd be cool to find a handle for it. Um, I'm not sure if that's something I could make or buy or whatever. 
not a big deal. Like obviously I'm not gonna be carrying this on a picnic or anything, so or just for coolness or anything else, but yeah. So that's gonna be about it for now. Um oh something else I forgot to mention. There is a capacitor back in there, you can see that big block bolted to the wall. Someone had already taken one of the wires off of it, so I kind of assumed that maybe that was causing a problem. And I just put a a one microfarad there from the one terminal that was still connected to a wire up to the wire just dangling in the air there. So that has to be worked out. Um, the one the box is a two microfarad. I just took a one microfarad in there because that's the biggest film cap I had on hand. Um, that could be changed to an electrolytic because that's just on the main B plus line. So I could just stick a little two microfarad electrolytic in there. Um, but that's something else that has to be taken care of too. Stupid meter. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to end this video. Uh, the radio is working. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, yeah. So if you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.